So in previous class, we saw even some configuration EAGRP. And we also captured some EAGRP packets. And we were seeing what all sent in between two neighbors, in between two EAGRP routers. There we noticed that autonomous system number is sent in the allow packets, the key values are sent. In the update packet, along with the network and prefix, the actual bandwidth, delay, load, MTU, reliability on the link is also sent, along with the subnet mask. The timer value is sent. We notice those things in our capture. Today is also an implementation and verification. So I don't think there will be a demo needed for this chapter. When I finish this, you'll be comfortable. Let's see. If you are not comfortable, we'll have another demo. We type this command. You remember that, right? Router EAGRP 100. What is that 100? That's the autonomous system number. Even if you have only one EIGRP autonomous system in your office, you must put some number to call that autonomous system. Without number, it can't be configured. Next is the wildcard mask. Why do we need wildcard mask? Before that, autonomous system number must be same in order to accept a neighbor, in order to share route updates with the neighbor. That's very important. Without that exchange of route information is not possible. Forming neighbor itself is not possible when the autonomous system number mismatches. Only when the neighbor neighbor establishes sharing of route update will be possible. Network is the command which we use to tell EIGRP where to run EIGRP. You see, for example. I have a router with three interface. This interface may have 192.168.0.1/24. This has got 12.0.0.1/24. <coughs> this has got 10.0.0.1/24. Now I need to tell the EAGRP in this router on which interface it should run. On which interface it should run. What does that mean? For which interface it should care. For which interface it has to send the, on which interface it has to send the hello packet. Via which interface it, it should uh, form neighbor and share the route updates. For which we have to use this command network. When I say network 12.000, now EIGRP will be sending hello on this link. Matches with 12. Likewise, when I say 192.168.0.0, then it will start running on this one. When I say 10.0.0.0, it will start running on this interface. This is not interface level command. It should be done under the router mode, router EIGRP mode. See, the router mode. Now, why you need wildcard mask? Same, similar, let's say we have a router with three networks. But this time, these three networks are subnets, 10.1.00 slash 16. 
ten dot two dot zero dot one slash sixteen ten dot three dot zero dot one slash sixteen. So all are of ten subnet. All these are of ten subnet. And you would like to run EIGRP only on this interface. Only on this interface. Then what you should do, you know, if you simply say network 10, 0, 0, 0, now EIGRP will run on all interface because all begins with 10. But your wish, your, you like only one interface to run EIGRP and it is only this interface which has got 10.1 then what I have to do is I should say 10.1.00 without fail you should put wildcard mask 0 .0 0.0.255.255 when I do this the first two octet of this address this network it will try to match on the interfaces only that interface only those interfaces that matches the first two octet with 10.1 will be <coughs> running EIGRP now let's say we we got a neighbor via this link Will this to be advertised? No, it won't be advertised because we are not running EIGRP on this link. These two network will not be advertised to router B. Yep. So in order to filter some networks getting, getting advertised, in order to filter some subnetted networks getting advertised, we use wildcard mask. <coughs> Next is we can manually change the bandwidth. The real bandwidth on the link may be 1500 or 1000 MB or KB. But if you want to increase, not possible, if 1000 is the maximum, but you can decrease. By decreasing, you can make one path lower than the other path. Let's say, We got two paths to reach some destination here. Let's say 1.1.1.1. To reach this 1.1.1.1, I can go via this gig 0 or gig 1. And according to this router 1, path metric via both is same. The path metric is same. And it is doing load balancing because it is equal cost path. But for some reason you do not like it. You don't want equal cost load balancing. You want only G0 to be used. Only if G0 goes down, you want G1 to be used. Means you want to have a, a failover link. You don't like equal cost load balancing. You do not want to have equal cost load balancing. You just want to have a failover. In that case, I can go to this interface and decrease the bandwidth, maybe phi to other, by using this command. How much is the default? Default is 1000 on both link. But when you go and decrease the bandwidth, only this link will be seen in the routing table. When this link goes down, this will be used for load sharing. So this is the reason why we need to use this command bandwidth. 
defines the interface bandwidth for the purpose of sending the routing update to the tra routing update traffic. So, not only for having a high available primary backup path, whatever we set is what going to be advertised to the neighbor. Like this bandwidth command, you also have a delay command. In the presentation, they don't show it here. You also have a delay command where you can also specify the delay. Now, <clears throat> this is not really necessary page for you, you for your level. This is very cheap uh, explanation, but simply they are reminding you that's all. You know it, but they are simply reminding you. What they are saying in router A, you should advertise only 10 and 179. You should not advertise 192. That is correct only. In router A, I have 172, 172, 10, 10. I don't have 192 on any port. 192 is on B. So that needs to be advertised only on B, not on a because it is not directly connected to A. This is known story for us. So we should not advertise those networks that are not on this router. On B router, I should not advertise 172.16 network because on B router we don't have 172.16 connected. Now I would like you to go through this example and understand this example and I'll ask one of you to explain this picture. You can take your time. When you're ready, you let me know. All three of you. Go through this picture. Tell me what you understand. When you're ready, I'll ask you only those whom I ask can explain me. Go through this picture, please. All oh, right, uh, explain then. Shivaram, you can explain. What do you understand from this picture? <clears throat> oh, hello? Yes, please, go ahead. This is uh, DHGRP 100 of process ID 100 network. No, 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 it's not process ID. Process, okay, okay. It is not process okay. ID, what it yes, is? Yes, yes. Autonomous system number. Okay, okay. See, in OSPF, okay. the same place we put number and we call it as process ID. Okay. That is OSPF. But this is autonomous system number in EHGRP. Okay, please go ahead, okay. next. The A, B, and C are all having the same autonomous, all are in same autonomous. Hmm. But router C is connected to the external network uh, in interface S0. Hmm. Uh, okay. Router A is uh, router C. Hmm. Please explain the one which you see inside the box. First, you explain the small box. Small box, this is uh, both are autonomous system 100 and both are having slash 16 network. Uh, this is uh, slash 16 network, both are having uh, advertised the slash 16 network. 172.16.00 zero zero. because they got subnet of that 172.16. B has got 172.16.2.0 slash 24. Actually, they have forgot to say the mask. It is uh, slash 24 here. They have not said here, but they have mentioned in this uh, 24 mask very clearly. This is all 24 mask. But here they have summarized and... Uh, yeah, that is okay. 
uh, not summarized when you say 170 to 16 what does it mean it means that all interface that has got 170 to 16 meaning in router b both this link and this link will be running eigrp likewise on this router this link and this link this configuration is same for both a and b yes now please explain this configuration which is meant for c uh, you see, we are just uh, uh, yes. the interface uh, 16.3.0, 16.3.0, uh, we are advertising and 16.4.0, uh, uh, we are that. Hmm. Uh, what does this mean simply, you know? Only on this two interface, we are enabling, the we are enabling EIGRP. Yeah. Only on this interface, the hello packets will be sent and neighbor will be established. On this interface, uh, where the external is connected, no hello packet sent, nothing will be shared. No hello packet sent, which means they cannot form neighbor. If no neighbor is formed, no updates are going to be shared. So you are safe. You are not sending your, your internal network information to the external network. You are safe. Well then, because if we use the same commands which we are used in A and B, it will include the ah, same also. So that's why we correct. Are. If you don't put the wildcard mask, then it would have advertised EGRP routes to the external via the external wire. Anything that is sent via multicast address will go to the external network, even if there is no neighbor. So to prevent that, we have this wildcard mask. See, it is very difficult to do these things in in RIP because in RIP there is no wildcard mask. In EIGRP, we do have wildcard mask, which helps us to filter. Now this is one of the confusing topic for the beginners. When they do the lab, they are, and everyone understands when I explain, but when they do the lab, they get a lot of questions, confusions. What it is? There is nothing to get confused here. It's very easy. I'll explain you now. If you see, this is external network, which means the internet, you can call internet. For every external network, where you will send the packet? To the ISP. For every unknown destinations, where do you go and search? You go and search in the internet. So, we write a static route for a default network. See, this is a default network. Whose network? 172.31 ISP's network. Instead of writing a default route like this, 0, .0, 0, .0, 0, .0, 0, instead of sending like this, instead of writing like this, this is another way of writing a default route. How? Specify the default network. See, this is not EIGRP. I'm teaching something out of EIGRP, which EIGRP is going to use. This is global mode configuration. Globally on this router, I'm telling router A, router A. If you don't know any network, this network is what responsible. You need to see where this network is. Send the packet to that network. Whose network it is actually? It's ISP's network. So we use the command IP default network. Fine, we use that command IP default network and we have defined it. What is next? We also write a static route to reach that default network. But notice 
we are specifying here a class full 172 31 class b but what is actually here is slash 24 that doesn't matter for us just for your knowledge i'm telling you you see you got slash 24 for 24, you no need to write a static root because it is directly connected. But for 16, you can write a static route. Now, what is the purpose of this static route? The reason why I write this static route is I want this slash 16 root to be seen in the routing table. Why? Because I'm using that as a default network. So what I did, I did a, I wrote a static route. That's why it says S star. S means static. We all know. Why that star come? Because I made it as a default network. Default network. When you define it as a default network, the static route becomes default static route now i take the default network i advertise into eigrp i'm not advertising slash 24 which is directly connected i am not doing that i am advertising the class full 170 to 31 and the other network 10, 0, 0 for this. So what will happen? EIGRP will take this default route information and advertise like this. So that I no need to go and configure default route on every router. Inside the organization, on every router, EIGRP itself. You see D star, it is not S star. It is not S star. Usually S is what we call the static default route. But here you see who is advertising the default route. EIGRP has advertised saying B. B router, do you listen to me? Listen, talk, talk. I am telling you if you don't know any network, just send it to this network. This network will take care of it. He is our default network. He is our ISP. So instead of advertising any network, any subnet mask, it's simply saying, whatever you don't know, you just send it to me. 172 to 31 network. You just send it to me. Rotary A is telling, you just send it to me. This is the network that is responsible for uh, default routes, unknown networks. I'll take care of it. Yep. So that's it is um, about EIGRP default route. What is EIGRP? IP default network with EIGRP reduces your burden. You no need to go to every single router configure this default network. This default network, the default route will be automatically distributed by EIGRP when you do this. You do this only on the edge router. Only on the edge router, you define a default network, you write a static route to the default network, and you advertise the default network. Only on the edge router we do this. Rest of the job, EHRP will take care of it. EHRP will advertise the default network. You see, gateway of loss resort is this network. Automatically, it will do this. So, this is the default network. To go to the default network, I need to go to this router whose IP address is 10.6402, which is directly connected. Please ask me a question. Uh, sir, I just need a clarification. So yesterday you were saying that uh, like if uh, the EIGRP considers slowest link bandwidth and delay for metric calculation. So when we were explaining about uh, that uh, two links that were connected, one Mbps and five twelve Gbps link. 
He said that uh, one Mbps will be preferred instead of five twelve Kbps. And if one goes one Mbps goes down, then five twelve Kbps will be uh, uh, coming to will become active. So how does that uh, work, sir? I am not sure. I am getting repeat again. So so you said that, sir, in EIGRP, it uses lowest link bandwidth and delay as a metric. Right? Mm -hmm. So in the previous uh, experiment, I okay, I got your question now very well. Wait, please. Yeah. See, you're confusing with two different concepts. Let me use this white page. Today what we were talking about is, we got two equal cost path. <coughs> one gig link, one gig link. This is G0, this is G1. Router 1 is seeing both the paths having same metric. The path advertised by, let's say this is Router 2, Router 3. That is also same and the bandwidth here also same. So definitely R1 will have equal cost path. Let's say the, the total value is 10,000 here. Here also 10,000 he gets as a total metric. He called as FD, feasible distance. Feasible distance is same. Now, if you want to prefer this and keep this as bandwidth, you just go and decrement bandwidth here. When the bandwidth goes down, the metric will increase. Let's say when you when you decrease the bandwidth from 1000 to 950 this may go to 1111 so router 1 will compare the metric this is lower metric so it will prefer this path and ignore this path this will be the backup path this is different from that story which we talked yesterday yesterday's story was like this Yesterday's story was different. Yesterday's story was <coughs> from A to B, there are two paths. Here we will we were not discussing which path it will take all the story. No. We were saying in this path if this is one gig, this is ten gig, this is five twelve KB. What will be the bandwidth for this path? This will be the bandwidth. That is the story we were talking about. If I consider 10 gig as a bandwidth of this path, then there will be a bottleneck here, there will be a bottleneck here. This story is entirely different from that story which I am talking. You got that still? Okay, sir. Got it. Right. So this lab, I want you to try before I demonstrate. Even though all the commands, everything is given here, definitely you will have some issues because I am seeing that in every batch, whenever I teach and demo, it works. But when you do it, it don't work because you do some mistakes. So you come with mistake and I demonstrate, then you clarify your mistake, then you are done with this topic. Take a screenshot of this now. Take a screenshot, try to duplicate this in your environment. And if you are successful, I'm happy. If you are not, don't worry, we'll fix it. I take a screenshot.